Now that we know how to navigate around the 3D viewport and select our objects, let's look at ways in which we can transform them. Let's select the cube, either by left-clicking on it in the 3D viewport or in the outliner, and take a closer look at its object's properties. Now, in case you don't see the correct panel in the Properties Editor, click on this icon. It's the one with the square and four corners surrounding it. The same icon can be seen at the top, and the name of the object is visible and editable. But let's leave that for now. This first section is the object's transform properties. It shows its current location, rotation, and scale, with values for each of these axes. Look at what happens when we click on one of these input panels and type a value. Let's input 2 for the cube's x location. The cube now jumps two units along the x-axis in our 3D viewport. We know this because this red line here indicates the x-axis. Remember the gizmo in the upper right-hand corner? This shows the orientation of the view, but it also labels which axis is which. And you'll notice that the red line and circle indicates the positive direction on the x-axis. Blender defaults to the metric system, so each of these squares are equivalent to one meter in real-world units. You can also click, hold, and drag left or right, and this will move the cube according to the transformation field we have chosen. You can click, hold, and drag over more than one input panel, for example, all three axes for scale. And now when we drag left or right, or input a finite value, all of these fields are updated simultaneously. In this case, we just scale the cube uniformly to double its size by entering two. The input fields also have some handy hidden features. This will have any spreadsheet enthusiasts grinning. You can, for example, enter math. Let's say we want this cube two meters to the right of this camera. And we know that the camera is five meters along the x-axis from the world origin. Well, we could do the math in our head. That's five plus two equals seven. Or we could let Blender do it for us. Enter five plus two, and when we hit enter, we get seven. This works for other operations where we can use minus, the asterisk key for multiply, and backslash for divide. Now, let's say you know the notations in imperial units but you don't want to do the mental gymnastics of converting it to metric. We want to translate this cube three feet and seven inches along the Z axis. We'll go to our Z location input panel and enter three apostrophe seven quotation marks. This is for three feet, seven inches. And when we hit enter, Blender has automatically converted this to metric for us. Now, if you really cannot abide the metric system and absolutely need to measure things in feet and inches, you can go to the Scene Properties panel and under Units, you'll be able to change the units from metric to imperial. Blender will now update the units that you will now use. I can see that it's changed meters to feet and the weight to pounds. You can further refine the units of measurements for parameters such as rotation, or temperature. If we tick the box separate units, our units will be shown in feet and inches. This is evident when using the measuring tool over here in our toolbox, or when edge length is made visible in our display properties. Unit scale is required when you wish to work at very large or microscopic units. This can save us from zooming way in or way out. And you can think of this more like a ratio system that you might see on a model kit. We're working in 10 to 1 ratio or 101 scale. The units will be displayed correctly, but our scene will interpret this as constructed to the correct proportion. I'll set this back to metric and reset our unit scale to 1. Now, entering numbers in several fields just to translate, rotate, or scale the cube sounds tedious and not fun at all. I'm sure you'll agree. Let's go back to our toolbox and select the Move tool. 
Again, if you hover over any tool, take a moment for some information to pop up and note the hotkey. The Move Tools hotkey is G. I like to call it the Grab tool. With our Move or Grab tool selected, this widget is overlaid on the object we wish to move. It has three arrows and three planes. The colors all correspond to the same axes as we saw in our gizmo here. We can now left click and drag on any of these arrows to move it along that axis. But what do these planes mean? Well, these will lock the motion to two axes so that the object only moves along this selected plane. Similarly, if we grab the green plane, we'll be moving the cube around the Y plane, where its movement is constricted to only the X and Z axes. The next tool down is the Rotate tool. The shortcut for this one is very obvious. It's R for Rotate. Our widget now transforms to a white circle with three colored arcs around the object. The colors correspond to the same axes. If we click and drag on this red arc, we rotate the cube around the X axis. Green, we're rotating around the Y. And blue, we rotate around the Z. The white circle allows us to rotate the cube in relation to our point of view. So we can rotate the cube, then middle click and drag around to rotate our view. And when we rotate this cube again, using the white ring, it will rotate facing our new point of view. If we hold down control, we can rotate in increments of five degrees. Holding down shift switches you into precision mode. Now, if you hold down control and shift, you can lock the incremental rotation to single degrees. Incremental transformations are not limited to rotation. These will also work for your move or grab tool. Let's go back and select that tool and play around with control, shift, or both. Depending on how far you've zoomed in, this will snap the incremental move to the unit visible. Beneath the rotate tool, we have the scale tool. The hotkey for this is S. This widget also has scale for plane, and it works the same as for move, where the cube nodes here stretch the object along the axes and the planes will only stretch the object along the plane. Scale has this little pop-out corner, hiding a scale cage mode. This will allow you to manipulate the bounding box around the object. You can select a corner, an edge, or a face, and further manipulate an object's scale this way. Now, because I've not done anything to this default cube, the cage fits pretty snugly around the cube. And you might think that this is no different than manipulating the cube's vertices, edges, or faces. More on that later when we talk about edit mode. But let's step back to rotate for the moment and rotate this cube in a couple of axes so that it's not sitting in its default state. If we now go back to our scale cage tool, you'll see that the bounding box is still oriented in what is known as the global orientation, where all the faces of this cage run along the world or global coordinates and don't match the cube. Currently, we have our transform orientation set to global. We can see this up here at the top of the 3D view, where it says global. If you click on this button, it will reveal a menu of transform orientation options. Let's switch this to local and look what happens to the cage. It now fits snugly around the cube once more. Local means local to the selected object. So now the cage is oriented to the object's coordinate system and not the world's. The next tool in this section of the toolbox is the all-in-one tool. Click on this and you'll get all of the previous widgets superimposed on one another, with the obvious exception of the scale cage and plane functions, and you can use this to scale, grab, or rotate in each axis. Now, if you've made a bit of a mess with rotating, scaling, and moving, you can either undo this by hitting Control-Z, 
or if you don't want to step back through all the undos, you can clear all your transformations in one go. You'll find this operation under the object menu, under Clear. And you'll see that by holding Alt as you use the hotkeys for Grab, Rotate or Scale, you will undo those transformations, resetting them to all of their defaults. Zero location, zero rotation, and scale of one. I've shown you where you can find hotkeys for most of these actions. Now let's try manipulating this cube with just the hotkeys. And I'll add a little extra tip here as we go. Let's hit G to grab, and by dragging our mouse around, we move or translate the cube. We just have to click to commit, and now the cube has been repositioned in 3D space. Let's hit R to rotate, and then S to scale. And every time we click, we commit that change. Let's try rotating and holding down control to incrementally rotate this cube by five degree increments. Let's hold down control and shift to further incrementally rotate by one degree increments. Of course, we're rotating this in relation to our view. Note that we are in the default global orientation for these tools. Let's hit R, then X for X axis, and you'll see this red line passing through the object's point of origin. We can now rotate this only around the X, and we can click to commit. Now, we could switch to local and rotate the cube along its own X orientation in the same way, but there is a faster way. Still in global orientation, let's hit R to rotate, then hit X twice. Now you'll see that the red line that passes through this cube is not parallel to the global X axis, but corresponds to the cube's own X coordinate. When we rotate this cube now, it will spin around this axis instead. You can try this with the Y axis or Z. And now try it with the scale tool. Hit S, hit Y twice, and you'll see that the cube scales along its local Y axis. Incremental rotation, movement, and scale also works in both modes. So you can hit G to grab, X twice, hold down control, and move the cube in unit increments along the cube's local X axis. All right, I'm going to reset the cube's transforms for this next demonstration so we don't get too far into the weeds. Remember how we could input numbers in the object's transform properties? Well, we can do that while transforming in the 3D view too. Keep an eye on the transform properties over here as we work. We'll grab our cube, G key, then constrain the movement to the global Z axis. I'll hit Z once, and now let's move the cube up two and a half meters. I'll hit the number two, period, and five. Now when we hit enter and take a look at our transform properties, you can see that the cube's location is 2.5 for its Z location. Let's try rotating it exactly 45 degrees around the local X axis. Can you guess how? Not to worry if you can't. Here are the keys that you press. R to rotate, X twice to lock the rotation to the cube's local X axis, and then four, five, and enter to commit. The object's transform properties should show rotation X as 45 degrees. Now let's do an easy one. Let's scale the cube down to half its size. Can you guess how? S to scale, then period five for 0 0.5, or exactly half. In the transform properties, you should see the scale values for X, Y, and Z are all now 0 0.5, because we didn't specify any axis. So it scaled this cube uniformly. Now, as basic as this might seem, you might want to get comfortable with transforming objects in the ways that I've just shown you. Once you're good with that, let's move on to the next lesson.